by Chat Sports. Today we are going to be breaking down five free agents the Lakers could acquire this summer in 2019. I'm Hannah Kulik, aka Laker Hand. You can follow me on Twitter at Hannah underscore Kulik and on Instagram at Hannah Rose Kulik. Okay, so before we get into our top five free agents, we have to first kind of recap the last couple of years in Lakerland and really talk about what's been going on. So last summer, Magic Johnson announced that he had this big plan for the Lakers in order to get us back to our championship ways. He said it was going to be a two-summer process in which during these two summers, he was going to be signing two big stars. Obviously, last summer he delivered when LeBron James signed with the Lakers, and in order to continue his plan for this upcoming offseason, he signed a bunch of one-year veterans to really just kind of fill out the roster space in order to leave $40 million in cap space for this summer to sign that next big star. Obviously, us Laker fans know things didn't quite go as planned this season, and the Lakers ended up missing the playoffs for the sixth straight season. Then to shock the entire sports world pretty much, Magic Johnson announces right before the last game of the regular season that he is going to be stepping down as head of basketball operations for the Lakers. This was completely shocking and sent the entire sports world into a complete frenzy and really just sent the entire Lakers into full-blown panic mode. Then also a few days later, the Lakers decided to part ways with head coach Luke Walton, which I don't think anyone is really too surprised about there. But nonetheless, the Lakers really do not have a lot of certainty going forward. We seem to have this great plan two years ago that Magic Johnson said, but now that he is out, definitely going to be a lot harder to sign these top free agents without Magic there to help us woo them. But at the end of the day, we wasted LeBron James's first season with the Lakers and we cannot afford to waste another one. So we have to get it together. We have to sign a big free agent this summer. So let's first take a look at what the Lakers need going into this season. Right now on the roster, the Lakers only have LeBron James, Kyle Kuzma, Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball, and Josh Hart. The Lakers need shooting. This past season, they were ranked near the bottom in the NBA in three-point shots made. They also need a strong shooting guard. I like Josh Hart, but it is just pretty clear that he is not going to be reliable or as consistent as I thought he was going to be. So the Lakers are going to need to go out and get a strong shooting guard. We are also going to need a point guard that can score. Obviously, Lonzo Ball is an extremely talented player with a whole plethora of tricks up his sleeve, but unfortunately, consistently at least, his shot is just not one of them. So we are going to need a point guard, whether that is a starting point guard or a point guard that is going to be coming off the bench, who can put in some more consistent scoring for us. We also need some three-point shooters, some wing players to complement LeBron James, a guy like Klay Thompson who would be the perfect ideal fit for the Lakers, but I'm not going to include into this list because at the end of the day, there is just no way he's going to be leaving Golden State. But a guy like Klay Thompson, that sharp shooting three-point shooter would be the perfect addition to this Lakers squad. But besides talking about players that the Lakers probably don't have the greatest chance of signing, let's talk about some that they do because there are some big names, some exciting names, some guys that if the Lakers were able to sign could instantly make them a championship contender once again. So let's kick off this list with number five. Coming in at number five, Jimmy Butler, a shooting guard for the Philadelphia 76ers. Jimmy Butler is a shooting guard, so he would instantly fit that need for the Lakers with a strong shooting guard. He's a good defender. Currently plays for the Philadelphia 76ers. He's had a little bit of a rocky season. He was traded to Philly. He struggled with some injuries. He also struggled to kind of fit in with Philadelphia's strong scoring lineup. It's funny because if there was ever such a thing as having too many shooters on a team, Philadelphia may have too many shooters on a team. He's been competing with Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons, Tobias Harris, JJ Redick, and he's still having a really nice season. He's averaging about 18.7 points per game, shooting 34.7% from three, 
But all in all, this offseason, if I'm Jimmy Butler, I would be looking to go to a team that he would be able to be the number one or even the strong number two guy. Maybe a team like the Lakers and coming to play with LeBron James. Having a guy like Jimmy Butler come to play with LeBron James would be a really nice fit. So that is one guy that I think the Lakers should definitely try to go after this offseason. Now before we get to the rest of our top five free agent targets for the Lakers, I just want to take a quick second to remind you all to subscribe to the Chat Sports YouTube page so you don't miss a single second of anything Lakers. I'm going to be covering the Lakers all offseason long and even though unfortunately for us Lakers fans it is going to be a little bit of a longer offseason than we would have hoped. Nonetheless, it is still going to be a very exciting one, so make sure you hit subscribe down below to our YouTube channel so you don't miss a single second of it. Alrighty, moving on to some more free agent targets. Coming in at number four on our list is a little bit of a controversial player, but coming in at number four, we have DeMarcus Cousins, a center currently playing for the Golden State Warriors. Now, DeMarcus Cousins has obviously been linked to the Lakers multiple times back when he was playing for the Sacramento Kings. He was ultimately traded to the New Orleans Pelicans where he was having a monster season, truly putting up MVP caliber type numbers for the Pelicans, only to suffer from an Achilles tear. Now, obviously, a torn Achilles is one of those injuries that sometimes a player, no matter how great they are, just can't come back from. So last year, going into free agency, he ended up signing with the Golden State Warriors for a minimal amount of money, and no one really knew what to expect of Boogie when he returned. But he has come back and he has really been able to still play at a very high level and be that DeMarcus Cousins that we all know and are kind of afraid of. The only thing that seems to not be as strong as it once was was his three-point shot, which is interesting because throughout his career, Boogie has always been known for being that stretch five, which is something that the Lakers could really use. This past season, he only shot the ball 27% from three, which is definitely a little bit lower than his career average. However, that is something that I may be not so concerned about because he is playing on a team that features guys like Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Kevin Durant, but on a team like the Lakers, he would have more of an opportunity. He would get more practice knocking down that three, so I think his three-point shot would come back. I'm not super concerned about that. Something I am a little concerned about when talking about bringing DeMarcus Cousins onto the Lakers is he is known for being a little bit of a head case, a little bit crazy. He is kind of that high risk, high reward type of player. So I'm curious to what you guys have to say. Do you guys think that the Lakers should take that risk, that high risk on DeMarcus Cousins in order to get that hopefully high reward? Comment Y for yes or N for no down below. I personally kind of just think let's go for it. Like I said earlier, you know, we already wasted LeBron's first season with the Lakers. We can't afford to do it again and Boogie might be that kind of guy that we need to really just jump start this season and get things back in track. I for one am pro boogie but I want to hear from you. Don't forget to comment Y for yes or N for no if you think the Lakers should or should not sign Boogie Cousins. Moving on to number three on our list is another free agent that has definitely been tied to the Los Angeles Lakers before and that is Kawhi Leonard. So coming in at number three on our list we have Kawhi Leonard, a small forward currently playing for the Toronto Raptors. I'm sure us Laker fans can remember last summer when apparently it was rumored that he wanted to be traded, he wanted to come and play for Los Angeles. Apparently the Lakers, but in a sudden twist he was traded to the Toronto Raptors and he has really come back from that quad injury with a vengeance. He's had a tremendous season with the Raptors and the Raptors in general have just had a great season and they are expected to make a deep playoff run in this Eastern Conference so that could convince Kawhi Leonard to stay. However, it is still rumored that he does want to come and play in Los Angeles. Now something really quick to consider when considering 
wearing Kawhi Leonard is the fact that he is a small forward and we do already have Kyle Kuzma, Brandon Ingram playing that position and that is also the preferred position of LeBron James. Obviously if the Lakers have the opportunity to go get Kawhi Leonard, you go get Kawhi Leonard and if that is the case, a starting lineup possibly for this upcoming season could feature LeBron James at power forward, we have Lonzo Ball at point guard, we have Brandon Ingram at shooting guard, Kawhi Leonard at small forward, and then maybe the Lakers bring in another kind of random one-year veteran at that center position. Let's just say for fun they re-signed JaVale McGee, so that could be a possible Lakers starting five if we were to bring in Kawhi Leonard. Now another thing that we also have to consider is the fact that if Toronto does make a deep playoff run, that could convince Kawhi to want to stay in Toronto. But like I said before, he has stated apparently that he wants to come and play for Los Angeles. He is a Southern California native, but apparently now maybe he wants to come and join the Clippers. Apparently he doesn't want to play second fiddle to LeBron James. He wants to go on a team where he can be that number one option. And obviously playing on a team with LeBron James, that's probably not going to happen. But nonetheless, I still personally think it's going to be pretty hard if you're Kawhi, the Lakers and LeBron personally are going after you. It's going to be pretty hard and pretty crazy to turn down a team that has LeBron James that you know if you team up with, you can instantly be a championship contender to go and join the Clippers. Especially being a Southern California native, I don't know, that just seems like pretty crazy and pretty far-fetched to me, but I want to hear from you guys. Do you guys think that the Clippers actually have a chance at signing Kawhi over the Lakers? Comment LAL if you think, nope, Lakers all day, or LAC if you think, nope, the Clippers are actually going to get Kawhi, doesn't want to come play with LeBron, he wants to be the main man. Let me know down in the comments below. Alrighty, Laker fans, before we get to our top two free agents, just wanted to remind you that if you haven't done so already, make sure to give me a follow on Twitter and IG for all things Lakers and some fitness things as well. I love making fitness videos, so if you're looking to get in shape for summer or trying to stay up on all things Lakers this summer, make sure to give me the follow on Twitter at Hannah underscore Kulik and on Instagram at Hannah Rose Kulik. Okay, let's get down to our top two free agent targets for the Lakers. This number two guy, if you would have told me this would be a possibility last year, I would have laughed in your face because I would have thought you were crazy. But coming in at number two on our list, we have Kyrie Irving, a point guard for the Boston Celtics. Previously played with LeBron James on the Cleveland Cavaliers. The two apparently did not get along, which is ultimately why Kyrie was traded to the Celtics in the first place. However, they have had a public reconciliation and now there are reports saying that Kyrie wants to team up with LeBron again and join the Lakers. Obviously Kyrie is one of those players that does struggle to stay healthy, but when he is healthy, he is a force. This season for the Boston Celtics, he's played in 60 games. He averaged 24 points per game while shooting 49% from the floor. 40% from three, while also dishing out almost seven assists per game and grabbing five rebounds. So he is a tremendous player. He's 6'3", he's only 27 years old, still has a lot left in the tank. But again, we do have to consider his health and the fact that he does seem to be quite injury prone. Another thing that we have to consider when before bringing on Kyrie Irving is what would happen to Lonzo Ball. Obviously, Kyrie's point guard, Lonzo point guard, and if you get a guy like Kyrie Irving, you're not going to have him coming off the bench, and that would just mean that there probably isn't that much need for Lonzo, so it would be interesting to see the Lakers do decide to go after Kyrie, what happens to Lonzo Ball. Personally, I don't really care. I would much rather have Kyrie. I'm a little bit disappointed in Lonzo Ball. He's yet to really prove that he is going to be the Lonzo's originally advertised. And of course, Lonzo has his own plethora of health issues as well. So I would personally be excited to see LeBron and Kyrie team up again, especially after all the drama that went down between the two before in the past when they played together on Cleveland. But I'm curious, do you guys think that the Lakers even have a chance at signing Kyrie. Do you really think Kyrie, after everything that happened, is going to want to come and play with LeBron James again? Let me know down in the comments. Alrighty, Laker fans, the moment has finally come. Our number one 
top free agent target for the Los Angeles Lakers for the summer of 2019 offseason is Kevin Durant. Now, obviously, Kevin Durant is the second best player in the league. Some may even argue that he could have passed up LeBron James as the best player in the league. KD started his career off in OKC playing for the Thunder before joining the Golden State Warriors and teaming up with Steph Curry and Klay Thompson to make that super team. He's gone on to win two NBA championships, being the MVP in both of those finals. Now it seems pretty crazy to believe that Kevin Durant would want to leave Golden State, but apparently he does. Apparently he is rumored to want to go play for the Knicks, but if KD is willing to leave Golden State, why not try? If you're the Lakers, why not try to convince him to team up with LeBron James and keep winning those championships? Now let's bring up Kyrie Irving's stats again and let's compare Kevin Durant to Kyrie Irving. So Kevin Durant playing on a team that features Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, guys that are all pretty ball dominant, gonna get their shots up, gonna score their points, playing on a team with so many stars. He still averaged 26 points per game while shooting 52% from the floor, 35% from three, while also grabbing 6.4 rebounds and close to six assists per game. Now could you imagine what those stats would be if he was on a team that didn't have Steph and Clay and Draymond and all these other guys that are getting their points and their shots up as well. It would be pretty scary. Kevin Durant really is at the height of his career right now. And like I said before, one could truly argue that he may actually be the best player in the league right now. When you think of his length and his size, he's 6'10", 6'11", but he plays like a guard. Kevin Durant truly is a once in a lifetime type of player and that is why he has to take our number one spot today. The Lakers were able to bring in KD. A possible starting lineup would be Lonzo at the point. We would see Brandon Ingram at the shooting guard, LeBron James power forward, KD small forward, and then we have again bringing in just kind of a random one year veteran again or any other center that the Lakers were able to fill in possibly maybe saying a guy like JaVale McGee at that center. So I don't know about you, but that looks like a pretty exciting starting lineup to me. So maybe a little bit of a long shot to sign KD. He may end up with the Knicks or he may just end up staying in Golden State. If Golden State ends up winning this championship, again, I don't know how he's going to leave. But at the end of the day, if there is that sliver of hope, that tiny chance, the Lakers have to do everything in their power to make it happen. So those are my top five free agent targets for the Lakers this offseason. Do you agree with my top five or do you think I maybe missed one or two? Is there another player that you would like to see the purple and gold go after this free agency during this offseason? Let me know down here in the comments on Chat Sports on YouTube or message me on Twitter at Hannah underscore Kulik or on IG at Hannah Rose Kulik. Thank you guys so much for watching again and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys!